newer 10-speed cassette compatible Hyperglide Freehub body is currently sitting here installed with the single speed setup ready for when I decide to put the wide range 11 through to 42 cassette on here. I marginally regret getting ahead of myself and doing the work without vlogging it, but at the same time, I'm just happy that it worked out. You never know what will actually be compatible between hubs until you actually just kind of do it. Researching this stuff, it's not easy. Shimano uses so many numbers and letters that to actually look it up without being like a Shimano aficionado, it's kind of all just shots in the dark. There's just one other thing I need to do that showed up on my doorstep last night before we do the actual video that we're doing today. And that is unfortunately not the tires, but the original cantilever brakes that I did order for this thing that were supposed to go on it to replace the cantilevers that were on it showed up. So modern silver cantilevers, just a set of Pro Oryx cantilever brakes going on this thing. The bigger gravel kings that are on their way will likely not clear that brake cable that goes across. So cantilevers for the win. Okay, we can now ask and answer the question. Does it suck? Now, normally with the does it suck episodes on this channel, normally I'd have some sort of control piece to check whether or not the piece that we wanna know if sucks or not is any good in comparison to. I'm in the woods right now riding, so I don't have a physical thing to compare it to, but that necessarily stops us from drawing some sort of parallels in the categories set forth here. We've got price, we've got weight, we've got features, and we've got ride quality. First things first, price. The price that I paid for this bike was 200 Canadian dollars. That's not bad for the example that I got. You can find them for less, you can find them for more. It really depends on what your appetite and how badly you want one is. I would compare it to going out for dinner and then a movie in the same night, probably working out to being the exact same price. The nice part about a bike is it won't turn into something going into the toilet nearly as fast as it. I wasn't upset to pay the price that I paid. Adequate does not suck price-wise. In regards to weight, all I can really tell you, because I don't have a scale out here, is that it's kind of heavy. It's not super heavy, but it's not the lightest bike I own by any stretch of the imagination. It's probably like 28 pounds. As a notable comparison, I can easily pick this bike up and get it out of the way of someone on the trail, if required. This tree, on the other hand, Uh, this tree, this tree here, is about the same effort, and you can't have a whole lot of fun with it. I'd rather own this than that tree. Adequate. Doesn't suck weight-wise. It's not, uh, it's not big in here. But it is easy to get turned around. I have no idea where I am. I guess I've been here before. Don't remember it. All right. This seems like a good spot. Now for the endless barrage of features that the Grouch does have. Steel frame and fork construction. As you all know, steel is very much real. Very adjustable stem height, currently slammed yet angled very much up. Small clamp size handlebars, very flexy and very compliant. Cantilever brakes, no longer the V brakes, therefore room for plenty of tire. Speaking of tires, these are not adequate for in here at all. Also the drivetrain is set up with a 10 speed chain cut to length. It is a geared chain ring and very much a cog from a 10 speed cassette. Therefore, as you're riding over a bumpy trail and when you need that chain engagement the most, 
well, you just might lose it as the chain falls off. Doesn't actually happen often enough for you to be on alert for it, so it really sucks when it happens. And last but not least, this very, very primitive dropper post system. I'm telling you, you just don't get features like this out of microwaves these days. I'm kind of really underbiking it in here, and I didn't really give this drive chain any fighting chance to be anywhere near good. Though as it sits right now, I am happy to ride it the way it is. All right, let's go, uh, let's go ride it. I know it's hard to tell, but this is like kind of a slightly flowy, bumpy little section of loam filled single track. Honestly, wouldn't be that fun on the Schwann. It would be like too much bike for this, but I'm gonna assume that this like slick tired, lugged, very hard sidewalled, hilarious drop bar retro mountain bike will probably make this more fun than it would be on anything. And quickly jumping between ride quality and features very quickly, um, this very primitive dropper post is going to be handy for this little section here. Yeah. Truthfully, the brakes do leave a little bit to be desired, but the dropper post is nice. But like with all things, once you get used to that long top tube with the weird steering geometry, the 26 inch wheels, the hard smooth center, hard compound tire that don't really offer a whole lot of great grip on trails like this, not to mention the 26 inch wheels and the complete lack of gearing, it kind of does become a fairly capable off-roading machine. As with the conclusion of all Does It Suck videos, we do need to determine and establish the level of adequacy and give an arbitrary Does It Suck score. And I'm gonna be kind of brutally honest here, but also try and sandbag it in my direction because I just kind of love what I've built so much. <coughs> On a practical level, it definitely does leave a little bit to be desired. The brakes are not great. I would put them akin to what the brakes on the Poseidon, they definitely slow you down. They're definitely kind of doing their job a little bit. They are there, but it's almost like it's like a Friday afternoon for them. They're like, I don't really need to, really need to do anything. The weekend's coming, a long weekend. And I think for its current ensemble right now, and especially with the amount of bikes I have right now, it almost feels more like a novelty to own it than it does to have a practical, usable machine for the time being. So in that regard, on like a practical point of view, to give it a score of whether or not it sucks, practically kinda sucks, but everything gets saved on a very emotional level in the fact that it's like, hell yeah, this thing is cool, it's gonna have cool parts, and we're going to do cool things with it. And that like bumps it up into this like exciting, kind of not sucky realm. But for right now, if this was like my only bike and I didn't have any more capital to invest into it, it would definitely leave a little bit to be desired and I would find myself saying, man, this thing kind of sucks. The easiest way to get it out of that sort of slump, that like low valley of just kind of sucking a little bit would just be to put together a more reliable one by system. That way when the chain tension is like it is right now, you know the chain is not going anywhere when you go over any bumpy areas. And then I think you could have adequate, predictable fun with this thing as is with the future prospect of doing what it is that I am going to do to this. So does it suck? Pains me to say it, but like, yeah, it kinda just a little bit does. But it's still fun and it's still going to be way cooler in the future.